Hey guys, welcome to a new episode. So today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take you through some of the gear that we've been using on the trip so far. So uh, we use this gear almost every day. Um, it's not the most expensive setup, it's quite a, a budgety setup, um, but we're not professional. So we use the uh, equipment as best we can. And like I said, we use most of it every day. So I think I'll start with taking you through one of the most used uh, pieces of equipment we have on the trip so far is our GoPros. So this is our GoPro 9. So we bought this on the road as we uh, traveled. Hannah's got a GoPro 8 in her hand, so that's what we started off filming with. We only started with one in the beginning, uh, but then we were using it so much and we didn't want to risk losing one or one breaking. Uh, so we bought a 9 probably a few months ago. Um, and we've also got two media mods. So we've got an eight media mod and a nine media mod. And I'll show you what the media mod is, just so you know. So let me take this GoPro off for a second. So the media mod essentially is just a little accessory that surrounds the GoPro like that. Uh, so this is the original GoPro you get. Um, if you have the cover here, which we do, uh, and we use when we're going underwater, it's then waterproof. But we generally use our media mods for uh, talking sections, um, just because it's got an inbuilt mic, which is really useful. And it's got these little slots here, which allow you to put accessories as well. Uh, so often we've got some road marks, which I'll talk you through in a second that we're currently using. Um, you know, we can attach those on. We've also got a light that we haven't really used yet so far. We can attach that as well. So it's really useful for those, uh, those little accessories to add on to the GoPro. Uh, the only issue with using the media mod is that it now is not waterproof. So generally when we go out, we kind of, we'll, we'll take a GoPro 9 with a media mod just so we can do any filming, any talking bits, etc. Uh, and, and then we'll also take another GoPro, our GoPro 8 with this attachment. This is called the Handler uh, and it's a waterproof accessory and it floats as well. Straps on your wrist like so, so you won't lose it. Uh, and we'll always take this just to give us a, a option if we need to jump in the water suddenly or, or you know, we're kind of flailing around kind of thing. We can, we've got one ready to go so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so most of the time we use this for the GoPro 8. We've got two of them, Hannah's got one there now. And then we use this extension. So this is an extension extender. Let me show you here like that. But it's also a tripod like so. So this is also a GoPro accessory and this is called the uh, Max Grip with tripod. Um, so yeah, this is a really, really good uh, accessory. And this is, we use this more than anything else. It's just so, so handy to have the tripod ability and also have the extension when we need it. It's just so easy. Um, so we've got a few other accessories here. You might be able to see. So for the GoPro, I bought this. So this is a Telesan globe, or a Telesan dome is what it's called. Uh, and I only bought this a couple of months ago as well, just to try it out. Only works with the GoPro 9. And what it does is it gives you those 50-50 level uh, shots in the water. Um, so you've got 50% above the water and 50% below the water. It does that by the water just stops here of the dome, kind of like halfway up. Uh, and then it gives you that uh, amazing 50-50 look. And um, yeah, this has been really useful. It is really hard to use though. Um, it's, it's waterproof in here, but you can't really change the GoPro functions when it's stuck in here. Um, and it's also very, very buoyant. And so swimming underwater, like when you're trying to dive down and swim by is really difficult because this thing just want to uh, take you up. Um, but it is a great piece of equipment and we've used it quite a lot. Um, and it, yeah, it gets really good footage and shots as well. Uh, another handy thing is this wrist strap so you don't lose it. Again, it floats so you won't have any issue with it sinking or anything like that. And one really cool feature of this one, not that I ever use it, but it's actually got a little screw here and you can put some little bits and pieces in there, you know, your valuables or anything if you wanted to. And that's actually a watertight seal. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's a good piece of equipment actually. Bought it on Amazon, it was about $80. Um, yeah, and yeah, used it a few times, but it's, yeah, it's been really good. I suppose the only downside is the plastic is very, very sensitive and it does scratch really easily. And you, um, yeah, you don't want scratches on the plastic because then you can kind of see them on the GoPro. So that's probably the only downside of that. 
Uh, for the GoPro as well, we've got a load of different accessories. We've got this suction cup, so we kind of suction that onto the car, or maybe like, you, you know, even here, you just kind of do that. That suction's on, that won't come off at all. Uh, and a few other bits, like we've got this GoPro light, which we never used. We thought we'd use it a lot, but we just never used it. And just different straps, like this is a, I think this is a chest strap. We've got a hat strap and a few other bits and pieces. Um, just along the way, when you buy a GoPro, it comes with this, it comes with that. So we've ended up with a whole load of different little accessories for the GoPro. So the final accessory we use quite a lot is this. It's our Robe mics. So this is our lapel version. So I've got a little wire going into my pocket. I'll show you here. And this is the little receiver uh, or the transmitter. Hannah's got the receiver, which is on the GoPro. It's just connected to one of these slots on the GoPro 8, so that's why we use those. But usually we use the road mics when we're doing talking segments like this. Uh, sometimes our intros or our outros, we use them. But generally when we're out and about filming, uh, we don't use them a huge amount because they're a bit fiddly to set up uh, and they're not waterproof either. And we just prefer to use the GoPro mics. It's just so much easier when we're out and about. So next to our cameras, so most photos we take along the trip, we actually just use our phones. So I've got an iPhone 10 and Hannah's got an iPhone 12, I think it is, something like that. Um, you know, mine takes okay photos. Hannah's takes really, really good photos. So we actually use this a lot for Instagram and, you know, some of the thumbnails and stuff like that. We use our phones an awful lot uh, for photos. Uh, and occasionally if it's dark, sometimes the GoPros don't really like filming in the dark. Hannah's iPhone takes amazing footage at night. It's incredible. So we generally use that if, we, if we're out and about and we want to take some footage there. But otherwise, we've got a few cameras here. We don't actually use this equipment uh, much at all. So I've got this um, 400D EOS Canon uh, SLR. Um, it's a really good camera. I just, I'm just not very good at using it. Um, and I feel like I spend most of the time trying to work out the settings rather than just take a good picture. So I don't actually use that too much at all. Uh, I've also got a 75 to 300 mil lens as well, um, which is really good for those zoom shots. But uh, again, I don't use this a huge amount. Um, we've also got a little Sony kind of uh, shoot and snap. It's got a really good zoom on this. Again, we don't use this too much. Um, to be honest, for a lot of the photos, we're either using our phones or I'll scroll back on the uh, GoPro footage and just take a still from the GoPro footage because it's actually so easy to do. So with all our camera, our GoPro gear and all of the accessories and things that come with it, we've got this kind of massive case here that we carry everything around in. Uh, and again, it's a foam case, so I'll show you inside. So we've actually taken all of these little segments out of it and it lets us kind of put things in really easily. Puts it lets us put things in really easily, just like that. So when we're going over corrugations and stuff, we just don't just don't get anything damaged. Actually, that goes there, and then this is for that. So it's just so easy to use. And uh yeah, we just chuck that in the caravan like so. And uh we put this under the bed where there's plenty of space and yeah, it's just a, again, a really handy piece of equipment to store all your valuables while you're on the road. Where did you get that one from? So we got this from Bunnings, I think it is. So you can get these online at Amazon and stuff as well, but we just went to Bunnings and they have a range of sizes. This is the medium one. They have really big ones and they have really small ones. Um, but yeah, Bunnings, I think it was about $80 as well, 80, 90 bucks. Um, maybe not that expensive, but, um, yeah, really, really useful. So one of the biggest questions I get asked so far on the trip is what drone do you have? I love taking drone footage and we did invest a little bit in uh, this drone. So this is a, uh, a Mavic Air 2. Uh, it's a really, really good drone. Absolutely love this piece of tech. Uh, it's amazing the footage you can get and it's so, so easy to use. Um, the reason why I got this one, this is kind of middle of the road in terms of drones you can get. You can get the Spark, which is a little bit smaller, or the Pro, which has got a lot more features. But the reason why I got this one is I'd never flown a drone before. Um, and it's got sensors here. So these sensors help you um, kind of maneuver the drone in the air. And 
they're also proximity sensors as well. So if you get too close to something, it's gonna stop flying in that direction. So it's actually reasonably hard to crash these things. Um, but this is the drone we use for all of our shots. Uh, I only got, when we bought it, I only got the drone pack. You can get a fly more pack, which includes extra batteries and all these other accessories. If you're gonna get a drone, spend the money and get that pack. I wish I'd done that. Um, since then we've bought an extra we've brought an extra battery we've bought some car chargers we've bought bits and pieces for the drone just to make it easier and uh, i think because of those pieces buying them separately i reckon we've paid more than what we would have for the for the pack so if you're going to get the drone you're going to spend the money just spend the extra hundred couple of dollars and get the pack it's well worth it along with the drone obviously we've got the controller here uh, so this controller is really easy to use it's got the little joysticks in there you just pop them out screw them in um, and yeah all you do is literally so easy you can use your phone I've got an app I just plug the phone in like so and just use it like that it's really really easy so easy to fly um, one of the really impressive things about this drone as well is it's got software built into the app so it recognizes where you're launching the app the drone from for example, if I'm too close to an airport, it won't let me take off. It knows I'm close to an airport, I'm in a restricted zone. It will just say, no, nah, I'm not taking off. Um, if I'm about to fly into a restricted zone, it's like an invisible wall. It won't actually let you fly any further into that zone. I can apply for permission to get access to those zones, but usually they're within airports and stuff, and like you shouldn't be flying a drone around an airport anyway. So. Uh, yeah, it's an absolutely amazing piece of equipment and yeah, I'd highly, highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, that's our drone. That's, so that, that's the DJI Mavic Air 2 drone. Along with the drone, bought this case. So obviously we're going on corrugations and stuff all the time. So I just wanted a bit of extra protection when we're carrying the drone around. So I bought this case. It's a, uh, it's a Lecafe case. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bought it off Amazon. It's probably about 80 or $90, but you can see it's actually, it's all foam inserts as well so it's really handy so all I do is when I'm packing my drone away I just pop that like so here's the drone so the drone handily folds up quite nicely into a small little thing like that and then just chuck it in there bang extra battery goes in there and it, I just carry it around like that. If I've got any accessories, I'll chuck those in there like that. Um, and it's just an easy way to carry a drone, always have it available. I just chuck it in the car and just before I'm about to use it, charge a battery. Um, and yeah, just carry it around like that. It's so easy. I can go over corrugations and stuff and not be worried at all that it's gonna break. So uh, this is a really handy piece of equipment as well. So last but not least, we've got our laptops the most important piece of tech that we have. Uh, so these are Hannah's headphones she uses while editing. Thought we'd bring them and just show you those. Those Bose uh, noise cancelling headphones are very good headphones. Um, but yeah, our, we've got two laptops here. Uh, Hannah's is quite new. Mine's quite an oldish laptop, but they're both reasonably powerful. Hannah's is a bit more powerful than mine now because mine's a bit old. But um, yeah, would they need to be powerful enough to work with the 2.7k uh, resolution that's what we generally film in we don't do 4k because it takes far far too long um, to edit uh, and way too many resources on our computers especially when we're traveling uh, you know we don't have a lot of time to be spending doing editing even transferring 4k footage uh, onto hard drives takes a huge amount of time um, so we we edit all of our videos in 2.7k uh, Hannah does most of the editing, so it probably takes her between 10 to 12 hours per episode. So that's a lot of work, 10 to 12 hours per episode. Uh, if there's a lot of clips, a little bit more, less clips, um, then it will take less time. But yeah, it takes her a long time to do these episodes. So I hope you'll appreciate all this hard work that we go to. But uh, yeah, we do enjoy doing it. Hannah does everything from uh, Cutting all the uh, cutting all the clips to finding music, adjusting volumes, you know, trying to create a story in the uh, video, uh, and then I help by doing all of the intros. I work with all the drone footage, uh, and uh, I will do all the maps as well. 
um, and then I'll pass them to Hannah and she'll chuck them in the, um, in the software to use. So the software we use to do our videos is Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, the reason why we use that is because I've got a subscription to the Creative Cloud account and that gives me access to all the Adobe software. So all of our editing that we do is using Adobe software. So I usually do anything in After Effects. So if you don't know, After Effects is kind of like the intro where you've got the uh, swipe and the, and the swipes for places, that's all done in After Effects, all of those kind of effects on videos. Uh, and all the main Premiere Pro uh, work is done by Hannah and that includes music, cutting all the clips and putting them all together. Um, but we also use other apps as well, like they've got an app called Lightroom, um, which allows us to adjust photos and just sharpen them up or add a bit of color and things like that. Um, and also there's a little app called Spark and that's what we use to do all our, all our thumbnails. It's really easy, just really basic software, chuck in a video, uh, chuck in a photo, put some text to it. Um, really simple to use really. Um, so we've got quite a lot of hard drives as well. So we've got three hard drives at the moment. Um, these two are full, so we're not even halfway around and we've filled these two already. This one's much bigger, so this will take a while to fill. I think it's about four terabytes. Um, so we've only just started using this, but we'll probably get most of the way around with this. Might just have to buy a new one towards the end. Um, and yeah, I suppose the other thing to think about when you're on the road and thinking about all your tech is, is your internet as well, because, you know, we, we create all of this content and we spend all of these hours building it in, in Premiere Pro and other pieces of software. Uh, it usually takes about two hours to export and then probably about an hour to upload. So it's always really tricky finding good internet connection. Uh, most of the time we just use our mobile internet connection. Um, we're both with Telestra, we've both got big uh, data accounts, I think we've both got 80 gig accounts. Um, so that's plenty enough for us for a month. And uh, yeah, we usually use our mobile coverage for our mobile reception for everything, all the uploading and everything like that. Uh, Wi-Fi is really sketchy on the road. We're yet to find a really good caravan park which has decent Wi-Fi. So we just use our mobiles. So thanks for watching guys. That's it about all our tech. Uh, as I said, we're just beginners. So, um, you know, we don't have the latest and greatest equipment, but for what we use it for, I think we've got enough and we use a lot of this every day. But uh, if you got any questions about any of the equipment or where we bought it or how much we paid for things, um, shoot us a comment below and I'll get back to you and let you know. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, please give us a, a subscribe uh, and like and yeah, any comments down below and we'll see you next time. See you guys. Thank you.